ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد My brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته أخرج الإمام مسلم في صحيحه من حديث عبد الله ابن عمر ابن العاص رضي الله عنهما الإمام مسلم compiled a hadith the narrator of which is عبد الله ابن عمر ابن العاص he said كنا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم في سفر we were journeying with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the meanings of the hadith quickly, and we halted, we stopped somewhere. And as we were occupied, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, with erecting our tents and taking care of ourselves, and some of us are competing with throwing arrows, shooting arrows. The announcer of the Prophet ﷺ made the announcement, As-salatu jami'ah, time, time to pray. And after that, the Prophet ﷺ stood up and he said the following. إنه لم يكن نبي قبل إلا كان حقا عليه أن يدل أمته على خير ما يعلمه لها. It is the duty of every single prophet and messenger before me is to let his followers know. Everything, every single good that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them. And also, it is the duty of every prophet and messenger before me to warn his followers regarding every bad thing that will happen to them. See, the spirit of the statement of the Prophet ﷺ is the following. He is saying that every Prophet before me did this, warned his people regarding the bad, given his people the glad tiding of the good. And I'm about to do the same thing with you. I want to let you know the good and the bad about this ummah then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said wa anna ummatakum hadhihi your ummah the ummah of islam ja'ala allahu afiyataha fi awwalha the goodness of this ummah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed it in the first generations 
وسيصيب آخرها بلاء وفتن But the later generations of the Ummah they will be tested with a lot of trials and tribulations. Again, brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the peace that I'm seeking out of the hadith. Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves his ummah so much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention this in the Quran. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمٌ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you a messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the ummah at large from you. Someone whom you know quite well. Harisun alaykum. He is so anxious about you. Has a lot of pity. Has a lot of kindness for you. He is compassionate and merciful to the believers. Brothers and sisters in Islam, sufficient or enough that every single person in the day of resurrection will be saying nafsi nafsi myself myself you know what muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be saying on this day ummati 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 my ummah my ummah on a day when everyone is concerned about him, herself, the Prophet ﷺ is concerned about the Ummah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet ﷺ did this. He warned us about what will happen to the Muslims until the day of resurrection. And he told us about it. In details, في الصحيحين in the two صحيح حديث حذيفة بن اليمان رضي الله عنهما. سيدنا حذيفة نريد الحديث that is compiled in البخاري ومسلم where he said خطبنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطبة ما ترك فيها شيئا. The Prophet وسلم, one day he delivered a khutbah to us. He did not leave one single thing that will occur until the day of resurrection, but he told us about it. The one with the good memory was able to memorize everything how long do you need to say what will happen 1400 plus years ago until the day of resurrection you need a long time and this is actually the longest khutbah the longest sermon that we know the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ever delivered في صحيح الإمام مسلم حديث أبي زيد عمرو بن أخطب رضي الله عنه he said beautiful حديث في صحيح الإمام مسلم the narrator is عمرو بن أخطب he said صلى بنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم صلاة الفجر one day the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم led us in صلاة الفجر and after the salah is over, ثم صعد المنبر, he went to his pulpit, فخطبنا, and he addressed us. Until when? 
until dhuhr salah until salat al dhuhr then the adhan was called then he led us in salah and after the salah was complete he went back to the pulpit and he spoke until salat al asr when salat al asr is here he went down he led us in salah and he went back to the pulpit and he spoke until Salatul Maghrib. The longest khutbah ever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam delivered at one time. Yaqul Abi Zayd fa'akhbarana bima kan He told us about what happened. Wa bima huwa ka'in and what is happening. وَبِمَا سَيَكُونَ And what will happen? Brothers and sisters in Islam, the things that the Prophet ﷺ spoken about are things that will happen in the future. Which are known to us by the name Ghaib, unseen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who knows the unseen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would allow some to get the knowledge of the unseen. قال الله تعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى says عالم الغيب فلا يظهر على غيبه أحدا إلا من ارتضى من رسول الله سبحانه وتعالى the knower of the unseen he does not allow anyone to know the unseen Accept a messenger or a prophet he chooses. He chooses. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was one of those who was given that knowledge. The knowledge of what will happen in the future. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the scholars normally Normally, they refer to the things that will happen in the future with that name, Ashratu Sa'a, Aw Alamatu Sa'a, the signs of the hour. What is a Sa'a? Let's just, I know this knowledge may be simple and basics, but just go over it quickly. Because this will take us to the subject that we have today. What is a sa'a? What is the thing, sa'a? The hour, what is that? Listen, listen to this. Like the human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving you the life that you have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you that life will end. And everyone will taste that end. قال الله تعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى says كل نفس ذائقة الموت every soul shall taste death. It could happen by all the sudden, but yet Allah سبحانه وتعالى giving you a certain term that you're not aware of. You could end up living it all, or you could be taken right away without completing that term. I'll explain myself. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wal hadith fi sunan al tirmidhi min hadith Abi Huraira radiallahu an, A'maru ummati bayna al sitteen wa al sabayin. The lifespan of my ummah is between 60 
and seven years old. That is the average. But he said, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ يجاوز ذلك. And some will cross that. And some will die beforehand. But subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given you certain signs that if you see, then you know your time is approaching. Uh, Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah compiled fi kitab al-Riqaq a beautiful chapter sammahu qad a'dhar allahu man balaga umrahu sittin aw man balaga sittin sana faqad a'dharahu allah if you reach the age of 60 and you're not Muslim you're not a Muslim yet you're not a devoted Muslim yet you have no excuse this verse in Surah Fatir, أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرْ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ Haven't I sent you the warner? You know what the scholars of tafsir from our righteous predecessors explained the word, the warner, in that context? قَالُوا الشَّيْب The warner is the gray hair. Haven't you seen your hair turn gray? You're about to leave. Huh? Still clinging to the dunya? Let go. The same exact thing with the hour and the dunya at large. This world that you see, the mountains, the trees, the sun, the moon, one day will collapse. Unlike death, you cannot stop it. You know, uh, our children watch these movies, pictures. Uh, Independence Day, Armageddon. Huh? And then the supposed judgment day is supposed to happen. Huh? And then they get this nice, good-looking actor who is a guru with computer. He goes and he breaks the codes. I stop judgment day from happening. You can do that. In the hour will come. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَأْتِينَ السَّاعَةِ قُلْ بَلَى وَرَبِّي لَتَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ And the disbelievers, they say that the hour will not come. Tell them, O Muhammad, by my Lord, it will come. But like death for this world, the death of the earth, the death of the, or the world is the hour. It will happen. <laughs> but again, when? Allah knows best. But like the human, Allah given signs for that end, for death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also made certain signs that if you see, then you know this world is approaching its end. And this is what we call the signs of the hour, the signs of the day of resurrection. I want to answer two questions quickly before I go and talk a little bit about the signs of the hour which will take us to our subject. Is it permissible for us to try to determine when the hour will happen day and time? Yes or no? Absolutely not. Because the knowledge of that thing was not even given to an angel. There is a hadith fi mustadrak al-hakim. Hadith Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كَيْفَ أَنْعَمْ وَقَدْ الْتَقَمَ صَاحِبُ الْقَرْنِ الْقَرْنِ وَأَحْنَى جَبْهَتَهُ وَأَصْغَى سَمْعَهُ How can I enjoy this world when the angel who's taken the responsibility of blowing in the trumpet, what is the name of that angel? Israfil is holding the trumpet, is holding the sword in his mouth, and he's looking at the throne and waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell him, now, he doesn't blink by the way. وَعَيْنَاهُ وَصَفَاهُمَ النَّبِيِّ فِي أَحَدْ طُرِقْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ In one of the wording of this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described his two eyes as huge as two planets. كَأَنَّهُمَا كَوْكَبَيْنِ Like the sun, huge eyes, look at He doesn't know. يَسْأَلُكَ النَّاسُ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ they ask you, O oh Muhammad, about the hour. قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ Allah. وَلَمَّا جَاءَ جِبْرِيلُ لِلنَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديث جبريل المعروف بحديث جبريل والحديث في الصحيحين حديث أبي هريرة وعمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه ما الإسلام؟ ما الإيمان؟ ما الإحسان؟ And then الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked by Jibreel, متى الساعة? When is the hour? When the hour is going to happen? What did the Prophet ﷺ say? ما المسؤول عنها بأعلم من السائل The one who is asked does not know more than the one who is asking. Why are we saying this? Because we find those people writing these books, the end of the world, the year 2007, the year 1999. But something good about these books, after the year passes, you could use it, you could burn it and, and, and get some heat going. You know, you could throw it and just... You could benefit from it at least, instead of keeping it in your library. Occupying some space. Don't be deceived by these people. So somebody comes into me and tells me, at the end of the world, the year 2012. And he's sure, he's sure, he's sure. He's sure. I look at him, okay. So what do you want me to do? What can I do? Okay. علمها عند الله والله as I was researching this beautiful subject اسمع لهذا الحديث يعني I enjoyed this hadith so much listen to this الحديث في مسند الإمام وسنن أبي ماجه ومستدرك الحاكم حديث عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه listen to this النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم says لقيت ليلة أسر يبي إبراهيم وموسى وعيسى the night of the ascension, I met, you know, Rasulullah ascended to the heavens. Huh? I met Ibrahim, Ibrahim al Khalil, alayhi salam, wa Musa al Kalim. Musa, the one who spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa kallam Allah Musa taklima, wa attakhad Allah Ibrahim khalila, wa Isa rawhullah. And Isa, the Spirit of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, alayhimu salatu wa salam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, لَقَيْتُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى لَيْلَةَ أُسْرِيَ بِي You know what he found them doing? They are talking about the hour. يَتَذَاكَرُونَ السَّاعَةِ They are talking about the end of this world. فردوا أمرهم إلى إبراهيم فسألوا when the hour will happen of course out of politeness and respect for الخليل أبو الأنبياء first what do you think يا إبراهيم 
فقال لا علم لي بها I don't know فردوا أمرهم إلى موسى Then what do you think موسى عليه السلام فقال لا علم لي بها I have no knowledge of it فردوا أمرهم إلى عيسى Then they went to عيسى عليه السلام فقال أما وجبتها يعني when it will take place فلا يعلمها أحد إلا الله when the hour will happen exactly no one know this but Allah سبحانه وتعالى وفيما عهد لي ربي and what my Lord what Allah سبحانه وتعالى told me regarding this issue أن الدجال خارج there is a person called the Dajjal will emerge, will come out. فأنزل Then I will descend. And once he sees me, فإذا رآني ذاب كما يذوب الرصاص الرصاص وفي رواية كما يذوب الملح في الماء When the Antichrist, when the Dajjal sees me, he will melt like salt melts in water. فَيُهْلِكُهُ اللَّهِ فسيدنا عيسى told the peace that he was given knowledge of which is what? because سيدنا عيسى one of the things that he will do as he returns to earth he will kill it دجال so he mentioned it طيب the second question is it permissible to talk about the portents the signs of the hour? is it? That's what we're doing, right? If it is not permissible, then we should not be doing it. It is permissible. What is the evidence? Huh? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he answered Jibreel alayhi salam, saying, مَا الْمَسْؤُولُ عَنْهَا بِأَعْلَمَ مِنَ السَّائِلِ The one who's asked does not know any more than the one who's asking. Then Jibreel asked, tell me about its portents, its signs. فَهَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا السَّاعَةَ أَنْ تَأْتِيَهُمْ بَغْتَةَ فَقَدْ جَاءَ أَشْرَاطُهَا الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم told him أن تلد الأمة ربتها وأن ترى He given him some of the signs of the hour Are we doing okay? We're progressing, we're going somewhere with this All right? The scholars of this ummah, you have a, a whole volume of text in the Quran and in the sound sunnah. Based on that text, they, they categorized or classified the signs of the hour based on its magnitude and impact into two main types. Two types. Minor signs, major signs. What are the minor signs? The sending of the Prophet ﷺ was a sign of the hour. The splitting of the moon was a sign of the hour at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. The companions, by the way, uh, I'm sorry, the, the scholars, by the way, have maybe counted over a hundred, over a hundred minor signs of the day of resurrection, of the hour. Adultery, alcohol. Interest, riba, killing, the lifting of knowledge, no knowledge of the deen. Very few people have the knowledge of the deen. Uh, ignorance. The number of, of, of women is more than the number of men. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of signs. A lot of signs. That they classified to be minor signs. 
The other type is the major signs and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam counted ten signs. Ten signs. Don't think about anything else right now. Just keep up with me because we're going to go somewhere with this. I'm going to come, up, come back and talk to you about these major signs. But I want to talk to you that there are some other scholars who categorized, classified these signs based on the fact whether they happened or not. So the first classification was on the basis of what? It's what? It's greatness. It's severity. How severe they are. Oh, that's a minor one. Okay. Oh, those 10 are the major. But other scholars, they looked at this text and they actually did another classification that I will share with you now. And this is the one that we're going to carry on with. They said that there are three types. Three types of signs of the day of resurrection, of the hour, signs for the end of the world. The first type or the first class, signs that happened and done. There is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Hadith Awf ibn Malik radhi Allahu an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Awf ibn Malik, U'dud sittan qabla sa'a. Count six signs before the day of resurrection, before the hour. Mawti, my death. Whose death? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَفَتْحُ بَيْتِ الْمَقْدِسِ And the conquest of Jerusalem. This happened when? At the time of who? Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. When they refused to hand over the keys to Abi Ubaidah, they said, no, it's written in our Injil that the one who must take the keys is Umar. Written in their books. وَمُوتَانِ يَأْخُذُ فِيكُمْ كَقِعَاصِ الْغَنَمْ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is referring to Ta'oon Amwas, a plague that actually caused the death of almost 20,000 companions. A plague that took place in a place called Amwas. So these signs happened. So that's type number one. We're just giving you examples. Type number two, signs that happen and still happening. And the scholars of the Ummah, as we speak, have a consensus that the overwhelming majority of the minor signs are of this type. You will find actually some scholars saying all the minor signs have happened except two or three. Two or three, that's it. But all these minor signs, they already began happening. Killing is everywhere. Today we hear 120 in, 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 in Libya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yaghfira lahum wa ayyarhamahum. Killing everywhere. Al-Qatl, Al-Qatl. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually described time will come when the killed does not know why I was killed. And the killer does not know why I'm killing. Just... Zina, adultery, they make movies of adultery. Imagine this, they make pictures of, of adultery. Amazing, amazing. Alcohol, all time. The best commercial right now in television is the alcohol commercial. 
interest happening. And signs, so that's two. Number three, signs that did not happen yet. What are these signs? The three of the minor and the ten of the major. What are the three of the minor? The Arabian Peninsula turning into green. The desert. Two, في صحيح مسلم حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه انحسار الفرات عن كنز وفي رواية عن جبل من ذهب لا تقوم الساعة the hour will not come until the Euphrates you know what the Euphrates is the river in what country where in Iraq this river will disclose a mountain of gold and don't tell me that's the black gold. Huh? A lot of people, they tell you that's the, the black gold. You know what the black gold is? Oil. Oil. Operation Iraqi Liberation. <laughs> you know that th this, this operation was, was, was named at first... After this, this is the name that they chosen first. Operation huh? Iraqi Liberation. If you abbreviate it, it would be what? Oil. <laughs> then they change it. Operation Iraqi Freedom. It changed right away. But at first they had this. They didn't pay attention. Why are we saying this? Look, this deen is not based on your opinion. We have principles to deal with the text. What is a principle? You cannot la yasihu aw la yajuzu an ta'khudha lafzin an ta'khudha lafzan ila lafzin akhar illa biqarina. A word that means gold. You cannot twist it. You cannot make it mean something without an evidence. It has to mean the Prophet ﷺ minted gold. That's it. Gold. The Nabi ﷺ tells you that, فَمَنْ حَضِرَهُ مِنْكُمْ If you're present, should you go and try to get some gold? فَلَا يَأْخُذْ مِنْهُ شَيَّةً Don't come near it. Tells you hundred people will be fighting 99 of them will die don't don't come near so this is the second sign and the third sign اللي هو الايه الامام ها ها محمد ابن عبد الله المهدي الحسني الفاطمي العلوي why are we saying this because there are some people, they believe that this imam is hidden in a tunnel somewhere since the year uh, so and so and they are waiting for him. He was five years old and he went inside the tunnel and no, 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 that's not the imam that we're waiting for. No. This imam, al-Mahdi, is from the offspring of al-Hasan. The one that they're referring to, the offspring of Al-Husayn. And I know, I, Allah knows best if this is true or not. But this is a sci-fi stuff. Okay, somebody went in the tunnel and he did not return. Give me a break. Al-Hasan ibn Ali. For us, for them, Al-Husayn ibn Ali. What are the ten major signs of the day of resurrection? Fi Sahih Muslim, Hadith Hudayfah ibn Asid radiallahu anhu, قال, 
Sayyidina Hudayfa said, one day, اِطَّلَعَ عَلَيْنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَنَحْنُ نَتَذَاكَرُ The companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم were sitting down in the masjid and they were studying something. And by all the sudden, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم arrived. قَالَ مَا تَذَاكَرُونَ What are you talking about? Look what they are talking about. قَالُوا نتذاكر الساعة الساعة occupied the companions brothers because that's the day the real life will begin from that day this life that we're living is nothing وما هذه الحياة الدنيا إلا لعب وله وإن الدار الآخرة لهي الحيوان the true life what are you studying? We're studying the hour. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّهَا لَن تَأْتِي حَتَّى تَرَوْنَ عَشْرَ آيَاتِ The hour will not come until you see ten signs. الدخان, the smoke. الدابة, the beast. الدجال. The Antichrist, Ad-Dajjal, Nuzul Isa ibn Maryam, the second coming of Isa ibn Maryam, Tulu'u al-Shamsi min Maghribiha, the sun rising from the west. And again, the sun will rise from the west, not Islam will rise from America. No, ya akhi, la yinfa'. You cannot deal with the text like this. You cannot make up your own stuff. The sun one day will rise from the west. Ya'juj wa ma'juj, gug and magug. The two tribes. Wa thalathu khusuf, wa thalathatu khusuf. And three landslides. Khasfun bil mashriq, a landslide in the east. وَخَصْفٌ بِالْمَغْرِبِ A landslide in the west. وَخَصْفٌ بِجَزِيرَةِ الْعَرَبِ And a landslide in the Arabian Peninsula. وَآخِرُ ذَلِكِ And the last sign. نَارٌ تَخْرُجُ مِنَ الْيَمَنِ A fire that will erupt in Yemen. تَطْرُدُ النَّاسَ إِلَى مَحْشَرِهِمْ Will drive people to their place of gathering. By the way, this hadith does not indicate the order at all. As a matter of fact, the same narrator, Hudayf ibn Asid, fi sahih Muslim, Al Imam Muslim compiled another hadith for him, where he actually counted these ayat, these signs, in different order. Which one will happen first? Listen to what Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah. Do you know who's Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani? Mean Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani? Al-Hafidh. If you say Al-Hafidh, if you say Al-Hafidh, then if you mean someone else, if you want to say Ibn Kathir, if you want to say Al-Qadi, if you want to say whatever, Another name, Ibn Asakir, then you have to name. But Al Hafidh by itself, it goes to Ibn Hajar. He is someone who explained Sahih al Bukhari. He is the author of a beautiful book called what? Huh? Fath al Bari. He explained the hadith in Sahih al Bukhari. No one, no one there came after him to, to explain Sahih al Bukhari again. You, you can't. Khalas. Work is done. And subhanallah, nafasuhu fi, 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 fi sharh al-Bukhari, the first hadith is like the last hadith, which is different to the work of Imam al-Nawi. Imam al-Nawi, if, if you read sharh uh, al-Nawi ala Muslim, Imam al-Nawi explains Sahih Muslim, you will find the beginning of Imam al-Nawi is, is huge, a lot of work. But towards the end, let go. Because a lot of, it took him 17 years. To explain this book, 
Sahih al-Bukhari. Here's what he said regarding the signs and his view. Mu'atabar. Yaqul, he says this. These are two groups of signs. One of them that will affect earth. And one of them, the other group will affect the heavens. The sun rising from the west and all of this. For sure, the first group that will occur is the group that will occur in earth. And the beginning of this is the emerging of the Antichrist. And this will lead to the second coming of because Isa is supposed to kill the Antichrist. And then Gog and Magog will break from behind the wall that Dhul Qarnayn built for them a long time ago. So Gog and Magog will emerge. Then Prophet Isa will die, basically. So that's the first group. That group will end with the death of Prophet Isa alayhi salam. And uh, there is, by the way, a characteristic of the major signs of the day of resurrection that you need to be aware of. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa actually given it a description that is overwhelming out of this world. Al hadith fi Musadrak al Hakim, wa qala ala sharti Muslim, wa wafaqa al Imam al Dhahabi. He said this Al Amaratu. خرزات منظومات في سلك فإن يقطع السلك يتبع بعضها بعضا The major signs it's like beads in a string If you cut that string what happened to these beads They fall what one after another So the major signs uh, if the jail is here you can't even breathe because another one will come, another one will come. But from the hadith, we understand that there will be a prosperous era in earth after the coming, the second coming of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, where things will go well for almost a thousand years, Allah knows best. And when the second group of signs which will uh, occurs, which will affect the upper universe, which is the heavens, the sun rising from the west, the beast will emerge. That means the day of resurrection is here. We got that? So the sun rising from the west, the beast, and the rest of these signs most probably, will indicate that this is the hour. I don't know if you, uh, if you can allow me just 10 minutes to finish what we... Huh? I, I only need another 10 minutes. Insha'Allah. 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 Is really an answer to this question. What are the benefits, the benefits of studying these signs? Because some people will say, well, why are we occupied with this? I mean, let's deal with the current life. Why do you take us? Why? Why do we have to deal with this? What is the benefits of studying the unseen? Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the believers in his Quran, in his deen, in his, uh, in his book. He said, Alif, Lam, Meem. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب. All these things, by the way, you're supposed to believe in it. If I come and tell you that there will be a Dajjal, you cannot tell me Dajjal ya Amm. Amm, Dajjali. That's a, that's a big problem. 
There are some people who, ref who, who debate the issue that there is no Dajjal. They tell you that Dajjal is a, a, a phenomenon, Zahira. Is, uh, there will be a lot of lies. That's what it meant. But a person called it Dajjal, no. Ya Rajil, this is, this is negate your Iman. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells you that there is Dajjal. And you tell me, no problem. So you're supposed to believe in it. All these things that are authentic from the Quran, which is authentic by default, or from the sound Sunnah that talks about the unseen, even if it does not make sense to you, you must believe it. And in order to believe it, you must learn about it. You must get to learn about it. Number two, I'm going to mention just 12. In 10 minutes. Number two, it increases your yaqeen, your certainty. When you find Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling you stuff that will happen 1400 years ago and you see it before your eyes happening right now, what does, what does this do to you? I was sitting in front of the uh, YouTube today and watching these soldiers killing, uh, uh, beating the, uh, the, the, the brothers in, in Libya. Wallahi ya shabab, hadith Muslim came to my mind. Hadith Abi Hurayr. Rasul Sallallahu tells you that Sinfani min ahlin nar. There are two types of people that I saw them in the hellfire, but they are not in the world yet. I do, have not seen them. They are not around yet, but I seen, because the Prophet ﷺ went, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, by the way, looked in the hellfire and he saw, he saw who is in the hellfire. He said, there are two types of people that I saw in the hellfire, but I do not see them in earth yet. Look at the first one, Rijal, Min, they are holding in their hands sticks like the tails of animals. They beat people with them. You know who are those? Huh? <laughs> the, 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 the police people. That's what the Prophet said. <laughs> Who are those people? I haven't seen them in earth yet. You want to hear the second type? Huh? Wanisa and women. Kasiyatun ariyat. They are clothed but yet naked. <laughs> Rasulullah is wondering who, who are those people? I haven't seen them yet. Ma'ilat mumilat. They walk like this. No, no, they, they, they walk, you know, have you seen those models walking? Don't, 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 don't try to see them, okay? Ma'ilat mumilat. Ru'usuhun ka'asnimat al-bukht. One day, Abi Bakr tells you this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Al-Hasan ibn Ali, radiyallahu anhu, wa'an abi. Little boy, he walks into the masjid. Rasulullah was addressing his companions. And then he picks up Al-Hasan and he looks at him and he says, Inna waladi hadha sayyid. My son, his, his, his grandson, because he's the son of who? Fatima, radiallahu anha. Fatima to Zahra, radiallahu anha. My son is a leader. He's a true leader. He's a true peacemaker. يُصْلِحُ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَيْنَ طَائِفَتَيْنِ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him the means to make peace between two groups of Muslims. Forty years later, the fitna between the companions. Who finished this fitna? Who? 
الحسن هي ست معاوية I'm not interested خلاص أوفر فتنة داعية ف When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you about unseen and the Prophet ﷺ tells you about unseen and you see that Ya akhi, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, Allah, Allah told you the result of a, a major battle that took place between the Roman and the Virgin. Alif Lam Mim Ghulibatil Ru By Alif Lam and Mim, the Roman got defeated. The Muslims got upset because the Romans got defeated. Why? Because the Muslims feel some compassion for the Romans because they still believe in some sort of guidance. They are from the people of the book. The Persians are worshippers of what? The sun, uh, the, the, what's called the fire. For they, they became upset. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, وَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ غَلَبِهِمْ سَيَغْلِبُونَ This is during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This happened during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's saying the Roman will defeat the virgin again in a period of seven to nine years. Huh. It happened in the ninth year. Fa When Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells you about things that will happen and you see it unfolding before your eyes, this increases your iman, give you certainty. Listen to this. Some of these events, brothers, some of these events, you must develop iman before they happen. If you don't have iman, If you don't have faith, it's too late. One of them is the Dajjal. Like here, we're going to be talking about the Dajjal. The next lecture, inshallah, we're going to talk about the Dajjal, seriously. We're going to talk about the Dajjal. In Nabi Sal- inshallah. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Fisa'i Muslim, Hadith Abi Hurayr, Thalathatun idha kharajna la yanfa'u nafsun imanuha. لم تكن آمنت من قبل أو كسبت في إيمانها خيرا الدجال والدابة وطلوع الشمس من مغربها Three signs if they happen if you're not a believer already خلاص you're gonna be in the losing camp you're gonna be in the losing camp So you must develop Iman. You must develop faith and actions before these events. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells you, in hadith Abi Hurairah, in Sahih Muslim, Badiru bil a'mali fitana. Counter, combat with your righteous deeds, the trials and the tribulations. If you want to pass your tests, you have to do a lot of deeds. So we're talking about these events that will happen in the future to motivate you to develop Iman, faith, and to act upon your faith so that you can overcome these trials and tribulations. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for example, I tell you just an ideal example. He tells you that in the forehead of it, the Dajjal, it's written what? ka fa ra Ka, because in Arabic, there, there is an alif there. You do not read it. Huh? It's ka, alif. Have you seen the Quran, the alif? Huh? Ka, fa, ra. Kafir. Yaqra'uha kullu. Huh? Who? Who's going to read it? The mu'min. That means if you do not have iman, even so, it's written there, ka, you're not going to read it. So you must have iman before it. Number four, these events, they have religious rulings. Some of these events, they have religious rulings. Tab, listen to this. Hadith al-Nawas ibn Sam'an, radiyallahu anhu, fi sahih Muslim. 
Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when he was asked about how long or the length of the time the Antichrist will spend in earth, causing fitna, he said 40 days. One day as long as one year. You know what concerned the companions? What? The salah. One day is going to be what? 365 days. Ya Rasulallah, what about the salah? Are we going to pray just five prayers? See what concerned them. This is what concerned them. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? No, la. أُقْدُرُوا لَهُ قَدْرَهُ هذا يسمى إيه حكم شرعي. This is a religious ruling. What is أُقْدُرُوا لَهُ قَدْرَهُ Listen what the Imam Nawawi compiled the Qadi Ayat. He said this. لِأَنَّ شَرِيعَةَ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم because the Sharia of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is complete. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم given a religious ruling just for this day. That you are to pray more than five times. How you do it? What is the duration of time between Dhuhr and Asr? Three hours? Then you pray Asr. What is the duration, the duration of time between Asr and Maghrib? Two hours? Then Maghrib. What is the duration of time between Maghrib and Isha? One hour and ten minutes. Isha. Then a break for a sleep. Then Fajr. At the same, on the same day. What is the duration of time between Fajr and Dhuhr? Five hours? Pray. So every five hours you pray. And then every three hours. And then every two hours. And then every one hour and ten minutes. Then you take a break. For the duration of the night, then you start over again. One of the things that Isa ibn Maryam, you know, one of the things that Sayyidina Isa will do once he returns to earth is what? Uh, some of us may read this and really do not grasp the depth of it. Huh. He will abolish, 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 remove the jizya. No more jizya. You know what the jizya is? A jizya is a tax that is collected from Christian and Jews who live in the boundaries of a Muslim state. In return, they receive services. In return, they are exempt from serving in the army. They receive a lot of privileges for that tax. Huh. When Isa alayhi salam comes back, no more tax. That means what? Islam wa illa. But for us as a Muslim, as a Muslim now, if we have a Muslim state, and you have Christian and Jews living in the boundaries of that state, can you force them to be Muslims? You can't. لا إكراه في الدين. You can't. But when Isa comes back, no more. Also, we were told how to defend ourselves. So learning about these events will help you in how to protect yourselves. From the Antichrist, for example, from the Dajjal, as we'll explain, you're supposed to flee. You're not supposed to expose yourself to him. If you know that he arrived to Aurora, Colorado, you go to the mountains. Run away. Don't. Because if you come near him, he will get to you. He is so skilled. Here's a very important piece. A lot of people in the Ummah, they claim that they are Al-Mahdi. Huh? That they are Al-Mahdi. Oh yeah. Go to the East Coast. A lot of them are there. 
I'll never forget this day, two brothers, two brothers entered into my office in, in, in Maryland. And this is how they introduced themselves. Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Mahdi, Isa ibn Maryam. Wallahi la akdibu alaykum. Wallahi la akdibukum al-hadith. Ma kadib hadith. This is how they introduced themselves. I told them, what about me? Where do I fit in this? <laughs> do you know, الإخوة السودانيين, درسنا في التاريخ الحركة الإيه? المهدوية. There are a lot of people died, by the way, because of people claim that they are المهدي. You see, you need to understand that shaitan plays your game. You want to be al-Mahdi, I will help you. I'll convince you that you are al-Mahdi. Didn't we have 20 years back, somebody went to al-Haram? Huh? You, you don't recall that? And a lot of people, a lot of hujjaj died. So you learning about who's al-Mahdi. Al-Mahdi, by the way, is someone who even does not know himself. He will not know himself until the night that he is supposed to be al-Mahdi. The fact that you're claiming that you are al-Mahdi, this already refute the fact that you are not al-Mahdi. The fact that you are al-Mahdi. Besides, his name is Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Huh? What is your name? Jack? Ma yinfa'. He's from Quraysh. Inta min Quraysh? You're from Quraysh? You're from the line of the Prophet? Maho? Let's be realistic here. For you learning about it will help you. Add to this the... Um, <coughs> seeking the knowledge of the unseen is something that we like. Don't we? How many Muslims, they go to the Chinese restaurant? just to read the fortune cookie at the end of the meal. <laughs> How many Muslims read the horoscope every single day? How many Muslims go to fortune teller? Back in the wilderness, we had coffee cups and you have a road going right, a road going left. Come on, unseen, oh ya akhi. Text unseen. Huh. Why WikiLeak? WikiLeak? WikiLeaks is so famous. Because unseen. You have a oh, Quran and Sunnah. Read about it. Came from Allah. Alimul Ghaib, the knower of the unseen. Read about it. Don't occupy yourselves in other things. We, we close inshallah with those two. A lot of people, they are appointed as awliya, shuyukh, because they can do what? Supernatural stuff. That we call what? Karama. We believe as, as, as the, the Ahl Sunnah. We believe in the karama, that a person can have a karama. Huh? Karama. What is karama? That you could actually know something that you do not know about yourself. It is possible. But again, check this person out, see if he's a follower of the Quran and the Sunnah or not. It Dajjal, the Antichrist, my brothers and sisters in Islam, he will command the sky to rain. Rain. It will rain. He will kill a man and he will tell him, stand up. He will stand up. He will come to a Bedouin, tells him, a Bedouin whose parents passed away, I will bring your parents back to life and he will bring them back to life. What do you call this? Supernatural. That's the top of the line. But yet, kazab. He's what? A liar. A'war. 
فدون بي ديسيفد هي ريسيفز هيلب فروم شيطان اند جن دوز بيبل هو ار نوت فولوينج ذا قران اند ذا سنه اند يو ار ديسيفد باي ذيم ذي اولسو ريسيف هيلب فروم ذا جن بس ذس دوز نوت ميك ذيم بايس اند رايتشس We close with this one, inshallah. A lot of the things that has to do with the, with the Antichrist, subhanallah, things that has to deal with your aqeedah, with your creed. And that is why we say all the time, brothers, learn your aqeedah, learn your aqeedah. يعني هذا الدجال, this Antichrist, he comes to this earth. First he claims that he's a wali, then he's a messenger. Then he's going to claim that he is Allah. طب هير از ا كويشن ذات اي اسك ماي برذرز كان يو سي الله ان ذس وورلد جست باي ذس ون ون بيس اوف كريد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اعلموا انكم لن ترون ربكم حتى تموتوا ريست اشور ذات يو ويل نوت بي ايبل تو سي الله انتل يو داي ف يو ار ان ذس وورلد اند سم بادي كمز ان انتل ذا ام يور لورد Not only this, he's one-eyed. A'waq. Is Allah one-eyed? A'udhu billah. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. He given you and me two eyes. So the Antichrist right there, one-eyed. Ya akhi, if you're giving me two eyes, go fix your eye. What's wrong with you? Obvious. But it has to do to deal with the creed of a Muslim. One last one. The issue of the Antichrist, and I say this to my brothers and sisters in Islam who live in America, in the Western world. is a very good avenue of da'wah. You know why? Because it's a shared belief with the Christian and the Jews. They believe in the Antichrist. They do, like us. You going out there and offering. And the beautiful thing about this piece, it invites the creed regarding Isa. Because who is, who is going to kill the Antichrist? Isa did not die. Yeah, he was not crushed. Learn it. It will be a good tool for you to talk to Christians, to talk to Jews about Islam. But I want to warn my brothers. In the kindest manner possible. Share your religion. Share your deen nicely. This is a position of da'wah, not uh, killing. Huh? Talk nicely and don't, don't argue and debate. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the next lecture, insha'Allah, I promise you that I'm going to talk about the Antichrist. I do, insha'Allah. But the lecture is going to be on Sunday between Maghrib and Isha. No, next Sunday. <laughs> 